Hey guys, I've got another kind of cool project I'm working with. And I want to show you these little things here. These are dust to dawn switches for DC voltage. So in your case here, you'll be looking at 12 volt systems. And it says AC 12 volt, but it's, it's AC or DC. And the way that these work is you're going to attach your white wire to the negative and you're going to put your black wire on the incoming from your battery and then you'll put the red wire to your device. Really simple and I'm using a standard outdoor plastic bodied jelly jar light fixture with 12 volt lights. They're also 24 but I'll tell you this now they don't last long on 24 on 12 volt, they'll actually run from 9.5 volts all the way up to about 24. So, careful using these on 24 systems if you got a wind turbine because they will burn out. But 12 volt systems, they work perfect. Now, let me hook this up right quick and I'll show you the way that it's wired. All right, so I'll wire it up. Now, the way that these work is that you'll have your power coming in right here and it's going to hit the black wire and it's going to go through here and your uh, cell that's inside of here will detect light and dark and you can barely see it right there inside this plastic now i've had these on the outdoors for many many years i'll show you one that's been up for about seven years and has never failed so right out here outside of my porch right out here on the edge of this little cover on my porch this thing has been here for seven years has not failed and it turns on this very old dingy LED strip out here under in my doorway. Forks every night. Come on, Emma. Forks every night without fail. It's never failed. Um, I had some of these that are a little bit different color and the plastic's a little more clear. They failed quick. So look below the video and I'll put a link to where these come from. So far, so good. Never had a problem with them. Now, this is just your standard jelly jars. You can get these Amazon, eBay, Walmart. This is a Walmart item here. They're kind of hard to find at Walmart, but I'll put you a link to some of them if you're looking for them. You want to use a plastic body, okay? Because you don't even need that ground circuit whatsoever. You can snip it off. You're going to run this on 12 volt only. Now, these bulbs here, I can put down what these are. These are 700 lumen 3000 K so they're just they're they're like a warm white plus uh, Basically, they're the same thing as a, a standard incandescent 65 watt bulb so they're put out 65 watts of light and That's quite a bit when you have none somewhere and the fact that it uses seven watts of power To do that that's already a drastic uh, nice thing and you don't have to convert this with a uh, inverter first so not having to convert this power first, you have no losses, so it's actually even a bigger benefit to use these. This is a standard 120 volt. Let me get it focused there. All right, same thing, pretty much identical. Now, this one, however, is going to cost you a lot of power because you gotta convert it first. So if you're gonna run, this, run a DC through an inverter and then convert, there you go kind of expensive to do. Now, all I'm using is standard inside outside underground variable 12 gauge wire. Let's get over here and I'll show you the run I've got. And what I'm using here, you'll see it installed here and we're going to show you how I'm doing the installs, where I put that at and why. So, let's get up here. I'll go fast forward. Right, out here on my second floor I have a second floor outdoors big storage area and the wiring I'll get over here I've come through the metal wall with a set of grommets and there you'll see the red the black and the white from the controller up above it and then the regular light fixture now the reason I use a plastic body is because you do not want to ground that to metal and you want it to float free for standard DC process. Um, the second set of wires is a set where it'll run down the length of my shop for another light to be controlled also by the same switch. It'll handle up to 10 amps. And then going up here, 
again where we have tons of supplies um, still finishing some walls here I have another one on the back of the shop so you, now you can see a more cleaner view of the grommets so I use a 3 8 and a half inch grommets through my metal and the way that I mount these is I put them in that little ridge that rises that goes outwards not the big um, ridge that's on the metal for my metal building and if you use this on a wood surface you can use a metal body just don't ground it you know same thing 12 gauge here and then a 14 gauge runner that will be going way down that way for the same thing back there so I'll have 14 watts of power required on one side and there's the 14 gauge wire there now yeah my shop's a big freaking maze I got stuff everywhere up here so we get up in here and uh, I'll head back down all right and those of you who might have watched that video the other day it's still sitting here I blew a hole through that to prove a point all right now so the same function as these lights are for my 12 volt this is for upstairs that turns on the upstairs light and this is all the rest of them um, that control all the lights up in here now those lights have been going for many a years you can go back and look at my old videos how I set these up all right that's the big strip lights now we'll get over here and I'm gonna walk you out here to what that one looks like mounted but you must mount this unit above the center of this no less than two inches above the center of it so up here like that on the wall so that the light don't false activate that sensor me and Emma out here working putting this stuff together so you're looking at a total of about about six bucks for this and about six bucks for this We'll get over there and take a look at what it looks like up on the side of the wall. All right, heading up the ladder. We're going to get up here and we're going to see how that's set up. Now you see I use silicone and it's turning clear around the outside of this. And now I've got light that is 16 feet off the ground because I'm on the top of a 12 foot ladder and reaching high and kind of hard to do. And that one right there and right there through the side, you can see where it goes through the grommet. And I put a little silicone on this because I only use one screw to keep it from ever trying to spin. You know, it gives it a little lockdown on it. And this, the way it's mounted, I use just standard roof metal screws with the rubber washers so that the rubber gives a little bit of give on that plastic. You don't crank them things down. Don't crank them down. Just get them to where they touch good and that's it and then put yourself a silicon seal all the way around it's because you don't want water in behind it i doubt it'll actually hurt it people install these all the time without it all right me and old emma 13 soon this right here i'm going to show you when i put it through the wall how we're going to wire it up on this next one so let me get that set up and it's just a standard mount I will drill two holes one here and one there close to the edge and just putting the standard I have a washer now I, have a, I should have said that a while ago I have a washer because of the size of that hole so here I'll show you right there and using the same standard galvanized screw I'm gonna drill a hole here and there in those two places so that this mounts you don't have to put any here in the back and that's how they're built inside pretty simple and you can see the ground wire is attached to nothing and you don't need to attach it to anything that's the whole setup right there so power coming in ground coming in ground goes to white both the white or the common from the light fixture make sure it's the common by checking it with the uh, the outer ring there that's this part right here so make sure it's the common. You can do the multimeter and test it. And then the center lead should be the black without a doubt unless they wired it wrong. And it will go to the red on the controller. And your incoming power will go to the black on the controller. And that's all you need. Just be sure to mount it like I showed you right above. So let's get this one here. I'm going to get it drilled. 
I'm going to mount it, and then I'm going to show you the wiring process inside the wall, and that way you can understand exactly how it works. All right, now in a very bright way with a little bit of extra silicone up around that accidentally, um, you can see I painted this one white, and the reason I did is this is the south side of my shop's wall. There'll be another one way down there, about know, 40 feet down. And then there's another one way down there. And they're all on 12 volts. So they do a hell of a job lighting it all up. And I got blackberry bushes growing back here. That's a mess. Time to clean up my place, right? All right, let's go inside. Okay, back up here on the second floor here. Now, what we have is we have the power coming in. That's marked. Now, it does have another line going to it because that's that line going further down for the other light. So we're going to connect it that way now and later probably use another controller on it for a fail safe. Now, you have your black wire coming out of your light fixture and it will go up here and go to the red load wire because that would be the light be the load. You will have your black wire coming from your controller going to power, 12 volts DC positive, and then you'll have your white wire coming from the controller and the light fixture both going to ground. And you can just snip off, as I did, the little ground wire because it's DC. You ain't got to worry about that. And nope, this is not a fire hazard. Nothing to worry about. Low voltage. Well, to hear that turbine. All right, let's get out of here. I'm going to do a little quick thing here. And I think it works like that. Okay, well, the sun has set. It is gone. And... I do live out here in the cornfields, don't I? All right, guys. Light is on. That worked pretty good, didn't it? Here, let me do a close-up. As you can see, that's... There it is. There's a little controller right there. And it came on just about three minutes ago. And by the way, you want to see how that one worked? That is that little strip up underneath. Okay, there you go. That's better. I paused that and didn't need to. So, there we go. Those are two lights, one on each side of the shop, and pretty good amount of light. I like the way that works. 65 watts is all, but you know what? When you got nothing somewhere, that works great. Now we just got to put the one right down there. And you can see about, there's a camera there and there's one there. That'll help with their their output. So that one shows the field. And this one looks back down the length of the shop. And there's three more of them inside. And those lights all came on same way. All right, guys. Y'all be good. Put them on. Install them. Run them on low voltage. And that way you never have to worry about ever having to where people think that you're not in control of your area.